Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. It is Wednesday, August 12th. We are halfway through the week, if you can believe it. These weeks just continue to fly by. I know we're all in this sort of state of time where time is kind of just a weird concept right now, but I think the weeks just keep flying by. Thanks for choosing to be here for our top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Lots to get through today. We will talk about former Vice President Joe Biden, who is the presumptive Democratic nominee for president, selecting Senator Kamala Harris as his vice presidential running mate, and what you can see from them today for their first appearance together. That will be in Delaware. Also, during the press conference yesterday, Governor Mike DeWine talked about the number of schools that will be going back to school full time in person in the fall. And it is quite a bit. We'll break that down for you, plus some advice from a medical professional on what these schools need to be doing with one thing that is a bit new that we haven't yet heard before. We will also talk about Cleveland baseball's COVID-19 situation with protocols being broken. Pitcher Mike Clevenger has apologized, and pitcher Adam Plutko is calling out his teammates for what they did. That includes pitcher Zach Plesak for what happened in Chicago over the weekend. Also, keeping in the theme with Cleveland baseball, the tribe's executive chef has opened a new restaurant in the middle of a pandemic. We'll tell you what's going on with that, and we will celebrate a holiday that is very near and dear to my heart. It is National Middle Child Day. Happy National Middle Child Day. We'll let you know how you can be a part of celebrating that and how we can share your stories with all of Northeast Ohio. First up, Former Vice President Joe Biden announced yesterday that Senator Kamala Harris would be his running mate for the 2020 presidential election. They will appear today together for the first time as a ticket in Biden's home state of Delaware. Harris is the daughter of immigrants. Her mother is from India and her father is from Jamaica. She served as the district attorney in San Francisco and the attorney general for California before becoming now the senator of California. And she was, of course, a presidential contender herself, dropping out of the race in December before any votes were actually cast in the primary elections. Yesterday, when he made the announcement, Biden called Harris a fearless fighter for the little guy and one of the country's finest public service. Here's what Harris had to say about Biden. She said that Biden can unify the American people because he spent his life fighting for us. And as president, he'll build an America that lives up to our ideals. She said she was honored to join him as the Democratic Party's nominee for vice president and do what it takes to make Biden our commander in chief. They will appear today at a high school in Biden's hometown in Delaware. They will talk about their shared vision for how to lead the country through a pandemic, the economic fallout of this pandemic, and a nationwide reckoning with systemic racism that has swept the nation, specifically since the death of George Floyd, which happened on May 25th, a black man who was killed at the hands of a white police officer, Derek Chauvin, who has now been fired from the Minneapolis police and now faces second-degree murder charges. Harris and Biden will then sit down for an online fundraiser. President Donald Trump did comment on Biden choosing Harris as his running mate. He said that she was actually his choice for Biden's running mate. He also talked about her handling of the Brett Kavanaugh Supreme Court hearings for his confirmation. She said that he said that in that time he felt she was the meanest, most horrible, most disrespectful of anyone in the Senate and also said that she was the most liberal person in the Senate. So we'll expect to hear more from Biden and Harris today in their first appearance together as a ticket. Now, here in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine yesterday talked about the schools that plan to go back to in-person learning. 325 districts in Ohio are planning to return to school full time in the fall. That's about 590,000 public school students or about 38 percent of the public school students here in Ohio. 55 districts, which include many urban areas like Cuyahoga County, Franklin County, and Hamilton counties, those districts will be going with a fully remote model for now, so completely online learning. That's about 398,000 public school students, or just over one-fourth of public school students. And then 154 districts, which accounts for about 380,000 students, or about 24.5% of those students, will be doing some form of hybrid modeling, so partially in-person, partially online. 
a total of 78 districts did not have information readily available when Governor DeWine was talking about this yesterday during the press conference. So here is what Dr. Patty Manning from Cincinnati Children's Hospital said should be some guidelines that schools keep in mind to keep students, teachers, and staff safe. A lot of this we have heard before. One particular thing, though, is something that maybe hasn't been mentioned, at least not as prominently. Wear masks. Practice social distancing. By the way, about those masks, we now know that they are mandated for students kindergarten through 12th grade. So that uh, exception for students 10 and under no longer a factor in Ohio. It's students K through 12th grade unless you have one of those medical exceptions. But wear the masks. Practice social distancing. Practice good hand hygiene. Washing of the hands using the sanitizers to keep surfaces clean, and also a focus on ventilation. So here is something that is at least not been talked about as much. It's been recommended by this Dr. Patty Manning from Cincinnati Children's Hospital that teachers should try to open the windows if possible or teach outside, which would be even better, as we know has been recommended by health officials, that being outside is better than being inside in these situations where it might be possible that COVID-19 might be spread. Now let's take a look at Cleveland baseball. Man, there is some drama going on there. Pitcher Mike Clevenger has now apologized after what happened over the weekend. He said, there is an implicit trust that each of my teammates share as we navigate a season during this pandemic, and I broke that trust. In Chicago, I made the mistake of violating the protocols, but the biggest mistake of all was not immediately coming clean to my teammates. Here's what happened with Clevenger. Over the weekend, pitcher Zach Plesak was found to have left the hotel in Chicago. That was against COVID-19 protocols. Well, it came out that Plesak had left the hotel, and he did not get on the plane with his team and travel back to Cleveland. He was sent back to Cleveland in a car in order to avoid possible introducing of potential COVID-19 to the rest of the team. Well, it later came out. Excuse me, just a moment. While I calm Winston down because someone just knocked on my door. These are the joys of working from home. I'll be right back. And we're back. Sorry for that interruption. Winston is the guardian of this household. So know that he's feeling well enough to make sure that we are well protected here at Stephanie Haney's house. So as I was saying, it came out that Clevenger was actually with Plesak when he left that hotel in Chicago, but Clevenger did not own up to that. He was in a team meeting. He even defended Plesak and did not admit to leaving the hotel. And he got on the plane with his teammates on Sunday and came back to Cleveland. Now, keep in mind, there are people on the Cleveland baseball team that are considered high risk for COVID-19, like Carlos Carrasco, who recently underwent treatment for leukemia. So, very sensitive situation here that Clevenger did not reveal this information. Well, Clevenger went on to say, I owe them better. I now realize that by even exposing myself to just one person more than necessary, I am putting myself, my teammates, the guys I compete against, the umpires, the staff, the Indians organizations, as well as the game that I love at risk. He says there's no excuse for my actions and I can only take responsibility and learn from my mistakes. He went on to say, moving forward, I promise my actions will reflect a full understanding of the protocols set in place while I continue my passion for competing for the incredible fans and the city that I adore. So at this point, both Clevenger and Plesak have been placed on the restricted list and they are quarantined and will undergo uh, COVID-19 testing. They're not allowed to return to team activities until they test negative a total of two times. Well, pitcher Adam Plutko is calling out his teammates for what happened in Chicago over the weekend. He started in place of Clevenger yesterday taking on the Cubs and he definitely made his feelings known that People are not happy about what happened with Clevenger and Plesak. This was in a post-game Zoom. Plutko said, they hurt us bad. They lied to us. He said, I don't need to put words in their mouths. These grown men can sit here and tell you guys what happened and tell you guys what they're going to do to fix it. Clevenger will still not be playing tonight. Again, he is on the restricted list. The, the tribe will take on the Cubs again tonight at Progressive Field. They lost last night 7-1. to Tonight they play again at 6-10, hoping to redeem that and maybe bring home a win tonight. Keeping it in the Cleveland baseball family, sort of, 
The executive chef for the team has been using his time away from the ballpark to open up a new healthy eatery in the Cleveland area. Joshua Ingram has always loved baseball and he's always loved food. Well, that came together for him when he would serve as the executive chef for teams and he has been the executive chef for Cleveland baseball, but he was furloughed because of COVID-19. So that gave him an opportunity to focus on the food part. So now he has a restaurant called Go Buddha that opened a storefront in July on Detroit Road and Rocky River. So at the core of this, it's plant-based meals, but if you do eat meat, you can also have the option of adding high-quality proteins. Right now, this is a walk-up or a walk-in eatery. It actually started last year as Go Buddha Meals, which was a plant-based delivery meal service, and that was targeting Cleveland Clinic outpatients who were on prescribed plant-based diets. Now, for those of you who are thinking a plant-based diet can't really give you the fuel you need to do great things, think again, because Ingram actually competed on NBC's Titan Games. That's the show that Joe Thomas, former Cleveland Browns great Joe Thomas, recently competed on and did incredibly well at, by the way. But Ingram also competed on the NBC's Titan Games, and this was all while on a plant-based diet of his own. So... Say what you will about plant-based diets, but if you could do it on the Titan Games, it's not necessarily, you know, something to think about if you think you might not be getting the energy you need from a plant-based diet. So if you want to check out Go Buddha, that is located at 19900 Detroit Road in Rocky River. One more thing to celebrate today, it is National Middle Child Day, and as a middle child myself, I could tell you, it takes someone very special to be a middle child. It is a largely thankless job. You know, you don't necessarily get to do the cool things of being all the firsts in your family for your parents while they figure things out. And you don't have any of that extra special weight put on you of being the last chance at something. So that's nice, a little bit less pressure, but you are in that sweet spot, in that middle spot. And you always have someone older to look up to and someone younger to uh, do your bidding when you're younger. <laughs> I can tell you that's how it worked out. My brothers, my older brother Jason, my little brother Matt, I love you very much. I'm very thankful for your existence and the fact that I get to be a middle child because you two exist. So we want to celebrate middle children today on National Middle Child Day. We want you to send us photos of you and your siblings, yes, because without your siblings, you wouldn't be a middle child. I know that's a very classic middle child thing to have to deal with while we celebrate you. We also want to celebrate your siblings, but please send us your photos. You can do that a couple of ways. You can use the Near Me feature on the WKYC app. You can also text us your photos at 216-344-3300, or you can reply with your photos on the Facebook post on an article about National Middle Child Day, which we have posted on our WKYC Facebook page. So make sure you send us those photos and then you'll see them today in What's New at 5 p.m. That's it for your 3 News Now early update for Wednesday, August 12th. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. with the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. And of course, those latest numbers from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19. I will see you all back here in just a bit. I'm Stephanie Haney.